Today, I wanted to share with you how I complete a voice assessment, including what I think is really super cool nerdy science, the part where I do the acoustic analysis to get their baseline measure so that when I take voice measures later on, we can see how much they've progressed with respect to the objective values. Without further ado, let's jump in. You know how much I love my templates. These are my lifesaver because they just operate as essentially checklists so that I don't forget to ask important questions during the assessment. All I have to do is highlight the relevant information and slash or delete extra information that's not applicable. First, I always ask, have you been examined by an ear, nose, throat doctor or ENT or otolaryngologist? We've discussed in other videos how ENTs can either visualize your vocal folds by putting a mirror in your mouth or by flexible nasendoscopy, which is a camera that they stick up your nose to look down at your vocal folds. An ENT is the one who's going to be able to make most voice-related diagnoses like muscle tension dysphonia, laryngopharyngeal reflux, nodules, prenodules, or identify if there's any asymmetry like paralysis or paradoxical vocal fold vibration. Next, we go into their voice history. When did the problem begin? Was it gradual or sudden? What do they think caused the problem? Has their voice worsened, improved, or stayed the same since it began? Are there ever any periods of normal voice? If yes, under what conditions? How would the client rate the way their voice sounds today on a scale from one to five, if one is normal and five is the worst their voice ever sounds? I also then get their perception of what their voice sounds like. Is it breath, horsey, strained, rough? I ask if they've had any previous voice or speech problems, and if so, I get those details. What are their vocal demands? Do they need it for their job? Do they have to speak to groups of people or is it mostly one-on-one? -on -one? Do they have to project their voice in loud background environments like at the gym or do they coach any sports? Have they had previous voice training and what are their professional voice related goals? How does their voice difficulties impact them? Does it cause them to talk less or go out less? Does it make them feel worried, sad, frustrated or embarrassed? Are there any other family members who have had voice problems? What's the environment you live in? Do you have any pets? Do you have any children? How severe is your current stress? What are your stressors? How does stress manifest in your body? And how do you counteract stress? Do you currently or have you previously been diagnosed with mental health? And have you or are you currently receiving support? Are there any changes to the way you think? Has your articulation changed? Do you now sound more mumbled or slurred? Has there been any challenges with your attention or memory or word finding? Has there been any changes in the strength, movement, or sensation? Do you have allergies, asthma, chronic sinusitis? Do you have symptoms of reflux? We reviewed the reflux severity index in another video. Do you have any of the following symptoms of musculoskeletal tension? Headaches, facial pain, ear pain, tinnitus, which is a buzzing or ringing in your ears, temporomandibular joint pain, numbness in your hands or shoulder or neck pain. Do you have any swallowing problems, including pain, irritation, dryness? Have you lost weight either intentionally or unintentionally? With respect to vocal hygiene, how much alcohol do you drink? How much caffeine do you consume? Do you use tobacco? What is the physical environment like in terms of noise and air quality? Then I get them to rate themselves on the vocal abuse rating scale. Zero means never, five means always. How often do you shout or yell with or without emotion? How often do you talk excessively? How often do you have to talk loudly? How often do you talk in the presence of noise? How often do you make or imitate noises, such as playing with children or voice acting? How often do you use the phone? How often do you cough or clear your throat? How often do you sing? And how often do you forcefully whisper? This glottal function index is supported by research and is a simple, quick, but effective measure to take. Zero means no problem. Five means severe problem. How would you rate the level of challenge you have with speaking takes extra effort? How would you rate throat discomfort or pain using your voice? How would you rate your voice gets weaker as you talk? And finally, how would you rate your voice cracks or sounds different? Next is the oral motor mechanism exam. So I look at their teeth, their tongue, their hard palate. Are there any structural anomalies? I examine their facial musculature, including their forehead muscles, their eyes. Is there any drooping? Is their face symmetrical at rest? For their lips, how is their pucker? How is their smile? And how is their rapid alternating pucker smile, pucker smile, pucker smile? How is the strength, range of motion, and fluidity of movement in their jaw muscles? Can they open fully? Close. 
when they open, can they resist my applied pressure and not let me close their jaw? When they clench, can they resist me trying to open their jaw? How far out can they stick their tongue? Can they touch it to the left? Can they touch it to the right? Can they go side to side quickly and efficiently? With their tongue in their cheek, is it strong enough to push against my finger? What about the other side? When they say ah, 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 does the dangly thing at the back of their mouth lift up their uvula? Ah, 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 ah. What does their breath sound like? Do they have audible inspiration? Is it wet or whistly? Can they cough on demand? Is the cough weak? Is it productive? Next, we have maximum phonation time. How long can you hold on to the sound S? What about the sound Z? What about the vowel Ah. Importantly, the S to Z ratio. If the S value divided by the Z value is greater than 1.4, it could signal vocal pathology. And it's important to get that visualized, whether it's nodules, a lesion, or something else. How does their voice sound when they turn it on? Is it rough, smooth, regular, or irregular? Does their voice quality sound breathy? Is there glottal fry? Does it sound normal or strained? The Garbus scale rates characteristics from zero to three. So you rate the roughness or how rough their voice sounds, how breathy their voice sounds, how weak it sounds, and how strained it sounds on a scale from zero to three. And after you rate those, you give it an overall impression for what the grade is or the severity or the perceptual severity. Next, you get your clients to do the rainbow passage. And this is where you're listening for your subjective perception of, are there any breaks in phonation? Is it breathy? Does it sound strained, strangled? Do they sound hoarse? Is there vocal tremor? Is there double voice where your false vocal folds and your true vocal folds are vibrating at the same time? Is there excessive expiratory effort when they're breathing? Is there a posterior focus for their resonance? In another reading passage, I look at their breath control. How many breath in total do they take? How long are their breath groups? Are they speaking for too long on one breath? How quickly are they speaking? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? What kind of breathing are they doing? Diaphragmatic or clavicular? Do they sound like they have too much nasal airflow or do they sound stuffed up like they don't have enough nasal airflow? Here we go. The Pratt evaluation. This is where we go to our acoustic analysis. The first things I'm going to record are pitch glides up to get my highest pitch and then pitch glides down to get my lowest pitch. And by taking my highest pitch value and my lowest pitch value, I will know my maximum range. So this is the program we're going to be using. It's called Pratt. You can download Pratt for free. And I've taken acoustic analysis programs both at McMaster University and at Western University for how to record and analyze these voice recordings. Okay, so we're going to record new mono sound. Make sure I select the appropriate microphone. And now I'm going to do two pitch glides up. So I'll fix my posture, take a nice breath. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm going to save that to list after I've labeled it. See, and now it appears here in my objects window. Now I'm going to record my pitch glides down. Save that to my list. So I got my pitch glide up, including my falsetto, and I went as low as I could go without getting into glottal fry. We took two trials of that. Now we want to get my fundamental frequency or my habitual pitch. So I'm going to count from one to 10. It wants me to do a reading passage and then speak a conversation. From those same exercises, I can also get my habitual intensity or how loud I am. For the sake of this video, I'll just count from one to five and I'll just give a sample, a little snippet of conversation. Okay, so starting with numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Save that to list. Now I will do a conversational sample. Over the weekend, I had a friend come over, actually an old colleague, and we decided to do a little bit of shopping. We went to Giant Tiger and I got some ugly Christmas sweaters. And we also decided to do a hot tub and we picked rocks out of my garden and we decided to paint them. So now I have a cute little veggie garden made out of painted rocks. 
save that to my list. Okay, now we want to see how much I can control my volume. So we're going to get two trials of my loudest hey, projecting but not shouting, as well as two trials of my softest hey, without whispering. Okay, so here's my loud hey. Hey, hey, save that to list. Here's my soft hey, quiet as I can go without whispering. Hey, hey, save that to list. Okay, now we're getting our perturbation measures for which we use sustained vowels e and ah. So I'm going to hold on to these vowels for as long as I can, as steady as I can. E And now I'll prolong my ah, ah. Okay, we've recorded all of the acoustic measures we're going to need. Now we get to analyze them. Unfortunately, Brat crashed on me, so I just had to re-record my sounds. So these are not the same ones we heard before, but they're the same exercises. Okay, so this is my pitch glide up. We have to zoom in a little bit. All right, so here, now I'm going to go to pitch. I'm going to get maximum pitch. All right, so that's my max is 526 in this selection. Okay, now let's get my lowest pitch. Pick my glide down. View edit, make sure the window is not too long. Pitch, get minimum pitch. Okay, put that in trial two. Okay, now let's get my habitual pitch for numbers. Select numbers in the object window. View and edit, zoom in here. Select, okay, pitch, get pitch. All right, so here's the mean pitch in the selection. Okay, now we'll, we skipped the rainbow passage, so now I'm going into conversation, view and edit, select the range, zoom in, pitch, get pitch. Okay, so my mean pitch in conversation is 183. Now let's go back to numbers and get my mean intensity or how loud I am. View and edit, select the numbers, zoom in, and we're going to get intensity, get intensity. Okay, 61 is the average intensity for numbers. Now let's go to conversation, view and edit, get the selection, zoom in, intensity, get intensity, put it down in my chart. Okay, time to get how loud I can go in hay. All right, zoom in. For intensity, get maximum for trial one, 90.75 for trial one. Intensity, get maximum intensity. Oh, my second one was a little bit quieter. Okay, let's see how quietly I can go. For my soft hay, view and edit, highlight, intensity, minimum intensity. Ooh, 24. That's trial one. And let's get minimum intensity trial two. 24.46, put that in our chart. Okay, perturbation measures. So here, for the perturbation measures, we're going to get the average fundamental frequency for the E vowel. So the fundamental frequency relates to the acoustic properties of the signal, the actual stimulus that we hear, our voice. It correlates to our perception of pitch. So the average fundamental frequency kind of refers to the pitch that we're hearing. All right, so let's get the average fundamental frequency of my E, and we're going to take the middle chunk of the vowel here. We're going to select. Okay, so now we are going to get the average pitch or the fundamental frequency. I'm going to go to jitter. Jitter is a measure of the variability in pitch within the voice signal. Remember that our voice is produced with our vocal folds, which are comprised of five delicate layers of tissue. They have a complex vibrating pattern, resulting in a complex waveform. This resulting sound wave contains not just one pure tone, not one simple sine wave, like a tuning fork. Rather, our voice is complex and resonates differently in our resonating cavities, 
So we have harmonic signals and noise signals in our voice. The jitter is a measure of pitch variability within that complex sound wave of our voice. Perceptually, high jitter values correspond with roughness or hoarseness. Once I've selected the stable portion of the vowel I want to analyze, usually in the middle, don't get the onset or the offset of the voice, I'm going to save it as a wave file. Okay, so I saved the stable portion of the vowel and I reopened it here. Time to assess jitter and shimmer. I need to go to analyze periodicity to pitch CC, keep all those values and hit okay. So now instead of sound, E extract says pitch E extract. Now I have to highlight both the pitch one I just made and the extracted sound and I should go to point process CC. Now it has another thing here, point process. Now I have to select all three of these to generate the voice report. Okay. And I use the first jitter value here. So my jitter or E goes there. My shimmer is the first value, the local value. This one also gives us the mean noise to harmonics ratio. The noise to harmonics ratio is exactly what it sounds like. It is a measure of how many noise signals there are in your voice compared to the harmonics or the lovely sounds in your voice. Mine is below the threshold, so that's good for me. My shimmer is below the threshold, and my jitter looks okay as well. So according to my E perturbation measures, I'm looking okay in terms of the harmonicity of my voice. Oh, I forgot we can get the standard deviation of the fundamental frequency. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, let's do the same for ah now. Okay, so here is my original ah sound. View, edit. Okay, I'm going to try to pick the middle few seconds there, and I'm going to save under reports. And now I'll go to open, read from file. It's right there. Open. I'm going to rename this as my extract. Okay, good. So there's my ah extract. So now with this trimmed vowel with the stable portion, I have to go to analyze periodicity to CC, accept those values, say OK. Now I have to highlight both the sound and the pitch to point process CC. And now I have to select all of those and go to voice report, accept those parameters. And here we go. The mean pitch for ah goes here. The standard deviation goes here. My jitter is the first local value. And again, jitter is variability in pitch, which can acoustically sound like hoarseness or roughness. Ooh, yikes, my shimmer is not great for this awe, but you can actually see that on the waveform. <laughs> Guys, my volume control is off. Don't judge me, having a bad day. And let's look at the noise to harmonics ratio. Okay, there's my noise to harmonics ratio still below the cutoff. Good. So there you have it. That's how you do your acoustic analysis with Pratt to get you your baseline measures to see are there any improvements in the numbers over time to get that objective corroboration to support any subjective gains. From there, you compare those acoustic values to the norms for gender and age, and you're off to the races. Good luck!